In this short foot demonstration, I want you to appreciate that short foot is going to be the way that we activate our core, the way that we activate our deep front line, and of course, the way that we activate what's called foot to core sequencing, which is the foundational concept of any programming through EBFA, but of course, the foundation of the bear workout. Short foot is an exercise that was first introduced by Dr. Yanda. Dr. Yanda was a Czech physiatrist and he's really the father of upper cross syndrome, lower cross syndrome. Uh, he's also known as the father of sensory motor training. He's been a huge influence on EBFA and a lot of this foot to core sequencing. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how I teach short foot and how we use short foot again to access the core. So let's start by bringing your right leg forward and your left leg back so that you are in a split stance position. Why I choose this position is that one, it's functional, so it mimics walking. And two, a lot of our clients and members have difficulty connecting to their feet. So if you were to stand and cue short foot on both feet at the same time, this can be very difficult for people to connect to from a, a mind muscle perspective. So I like to do one foot at a time. Again, right leg forward, left leg back, so you're in a split stance position. Your arms could be on your side if you wanna actually mimic gait, you absolutely can. First start by softening the knees. So your knees are soft. The reason why you want to soften your knees is that when we do short foot, you actually create a locking mechanism up your lower extremity and if your knees were extended and locked out and you lock a locked joint, you can put stress or shear on the meniscus. Remember, we never want to do harm. So we want to soften the knees. Start by finding the foot tripod on the front foot. This is going to be under the first metatarsal head, fifth metatarsal head and heel. Or you could think of it as the first toe, the fifth toe, and the heel. I want you to lift your toes, spread them out as wide as you can, and then place them back down onto the ground. You should feel increased skin to surface contact. To do short foot, simply, you are just pushing the tips of your toes down into the ground. My toes are pushing down. I'm thinking push toenails down. I'm not drawing in. I'm not rolling to the outside of my foot. I'm just simply spreading my toes and then pushing the toenails down. And then I want you to relax your foot and then do it again. Push the toes down and then relax. Remember what I had mentioned earlier in Intro to Bear is that bear is all about isolation. Can you move your arm without moving the rest of your body? Can you push your toes down without moving the rest of your body? This means make sure that you're not doing something like this. Yes, you don't have to physically move your body when you push your toes down. One more time, please. Push the toenails down, hold, and then good release. Great, let's switch to the other side. Left leg goes forward, right leg goes back, knees are soft, split stance position, foot tripod, spread the toes, place them back down, and then again, same thing. Push the tips of the toes down in the ground, and then release. Push the tips of the toes down, and then release. I want you to keep doing that, but I'm gonna show you my foot from the side. Do you see that every time I push my toes down, that I'm getting an increase in my medial arch? You may even see that there's a shadow of the muscle called abductor hallucis in my foot that's engaging. And then finally, I want you to appreciate that you're actually coming off of the ball of the foot every time you push your toes down. That's what I want you to see slash feel in your own foot. And then of course, observe within your clients and members. Okay, let's add on, go to that first side. So that's foundational, short foot pushing toes down. The strength that you want to use is around 20% contraction. This is not a maximum contraction exercise. Similar to the pelvic floor, when we're activating it, we sit around 20, 25%. You never want to be in a movement prep or in a warm up max contraction of the pelvic floor or of course the foot. So right leg goes forward, left leg goes back. Find your foot tripod on the front foot, spread your toes, place them down again, 
perfect. Now before you engage short foot, I want you to engage your core. So put tension in your TVA, lift your pelvic floor if you know what that means. We'll of course go into that and then hold that and now push your toes down into the ground. Did you feel that different? Did you feel something change as soon as you pushed your toes down and then release both? Do that again. Shut your eyes if you need to, to just feel it internally a little bit more. Engage your transverse abdominals or your core. Put tension in your core. Hold it. Push your toes down. Boom. As soon as I pushed my toes down, I felt tension in my core go higher. I want you to appreciate that. And then release. Do it one more time. Engage your core. Shut your eyes again if you need. Push your toes down. Boom. As soon as I did it, I felt this tension or pressure in my core go higher release. That's what we want to be feeling. That technically is what foot to core sequencing is. But let's add on. Go to the other side. Left leg forward, right leg back. Find your foot tripod, spread your toes, place them down again. Start again. Engage your core, TVA. Hold, push your toes into the ground. Boom. Did you feel it go higher? And then release. Engage your core, toes go down and release. This last one, let's hold. Engage your core, push your toes down and hold. Stay there for a moment, stay. Do you feel like they're kind of talking to each other a little bit? Push your toes down harder. Did your core engage more? Engage your core more. Did your foot want to engage more? And then release. Again, this is appreciating that your feet are connected to your core. Okay, back to the other side. Right leg forward, left leg goes back. Now, I know in bear, Almost everything is done on a single leg stance, but let's incorporate both feet just so you can appreciate how connected both of our feet slash foundation is to our core. So right leg forward, left leg back, knees are soft, foot tripod front, foot tripod back, toes are spread on both, knees are soft on both. Stay here for a moment, relax the core, push your front toes down, stay. Push your back toes down, stay. Do you feel kind of anchored and really stable and your core's not even engaged yet? And then release both. Do that again. Engage the front, engage the back, release both. Engage the front, engage the back, release. Front, back, release. All I'm doing is a coordination exercise right now. Front, back, release. Do one more. Front, back, release. Can you engage both feet same time in this position? Both feet, release. Both feet, release. Both feet, release. Okay? This is a high coordination exercise that even though all we're doing is pushing our toes down, requires a lot of mind muscle connection. So it is quite progressed. Let's try the same thing on the other side and then let's add in our core. Left leg forward, right leg goes back, knees are soft, foot tripod, spread the toes, place them down again. Again, we'll relax the core. Foot tripod, toes, front, front, back, back, here we go. Left toes down, right toes down, release. Left, right, release. Left, right, release. Now when I say release, my toes aren't lifting off of the ground. I'm not coming up. All I'm doing is letting go, the toes pushing down. Okay, so front, back, release, front, back, release, front, back, release, both at the same time, both, release, both, release, both, release. Again, coordination exercise. Can you do this? Just because you can do it with your right leg forward does not necessarily mean you can do it the same with your left leg forward, which is why I really like this exercise. It builds that mind foot connection, but it's also a great coordination exercise. It's kind of like juggling in a sense. It trains the brain, okay? Let's add the last layer, which is going to be getting our core connected to both feet. And then of course, we'll add just for the fun of it, all the way up to our palate. So right leg forward, left leg goes back. Knees are soft, assume that position. Perfect. Foot tripod, spread the toes. Here we go, start with your core. Engage your TVA slash pelvic floor, stay. Push your front toes into the ground. Push your back toes into the ground and then just stay. Do you feel connected? Toes are down, abs are in, rest of your body is relaxed. Whew. And then release, do it again. Engage your core, 
Front toes go down, back toes go down. You can just stay there for a minute. Feel controlled, feel connected, foot to core, and then release. Do one more. Core, front toes, back toes, hold, and then release. Great job. Let's go to the other side. Left leg forward, right leg goes back, knees are soft, toes are spread, foot tripod. Same thing as on the other side. Engage core, left toes, right toes, release. Core, left toes, right toes, release. Next one, let's hold. Core, left toes, right toes, hold both. And then again, just appreciate, stay there. Let's add on for a bonus. I want you to take your tongue and push it into your palate. As soon as you do that, you please keep doing it. I'm talking so I can't, but your tongue is into your palate. As soon as you do that, did you feel your core engage more? You should release everything. Let's do one more. Engage the core, engage front foot, back foot, tongue to palate, hold, stay. Do you feel that increase in tension? Again, you should, and then release. What we are demonstrating between core, foot, foot, tongue to palate is what's called tension stacking. Tension is when we engage those muscles. Tension is when we push our toes down. Tension stacking equals stability. So we build stability through the bare workout by foot to core sequencing or fascial tensioning and tension stacking. I hope that that makes sense. The next se section, we're going to be incorporating how we add breath to this foot to core sequencing, and then of course build it into the workout.